What do you most commonly fight with your significant other about? The toilet seat, money? Well, first off, here's the good news. Verbal fights are okay. Healthy relationships actually require them. According to our next guest, Judith Wright, author of The Heart of the Fight, A Couple's Guide to 15 Common Fights, What They Really Mean, and How They Can Bring You Closer. Hi, Judith. Great Hi, to see you. Great. It seems so counterintuitive, but it's good news for most of us who do fight. <laughs> it's really important. Fighting helps you get closer. I mean, if you avoid fighting, you're avoiding intimacy. And great relationships need great fights. And so the re it's when you resolve the fights, that's how you become closer, correct? Well, yeah, and it's even more than resolving. It's kind of, it's not just solving it, because sometimes you can give in right. and get rid of the tension, but you haven't really uncovered what it is. It's like, what does that fight mean to you? What, is, what do you really yearn for deep in your heart? What's going on? If you unlock that, then you get to things that actually help you become more intimate. Right, you peel back the onion. Right. Now, what are the parameters, though, of healthy fighting? Because clearly yeah, it can yeah. veer off into unhealthy territory. Yeah, everybody fights, but yeah. part of it, there's we call them rules of engagement. One is like really work on accentuating the positive in your relationship. If you've got a background of care and affection and well-being, then you can weather the fights easier and try to negate some of those real below the belt kinds yeah. of things. But another one, this one I love, is that nobody gets more than 50% of the blame. That's good. It's That's really a good important. One. You're a couple. You're in it together. Well, that is one of the reasons that you that you pointed out that people fight the blame game. Yeah. Everybody yeah. wants to say it was your fault that right. this went wrong. Right. So what should we do? Well, partly just, yeah, we're going to blame sometimes a part of it, but only 50%. So it said, you made me do that, or you picked the restaurant, and it was crummy. Right. <laughs> yeah, we it's your fault. It's your fault. There's another rule of engagement that helps. Everyone is 100% responsible for their own satisfaction and their happiness. That's so I can blame one. my partner 50%, but I've got some role, and if I really want to be happy and satisfied, Chances are there's something I could do or right. say or or change about it or analyze why it went wrong and what we could do differently in the future. What about the toilet seat <laughs> argument and yeah. other domestic fights, the chores, yeah. who whose turn is it to unload the dishwasher and yeah. all of that? Oh, those are really... Oh, those are, that's what we fight about a lot. <laughs> well, you know, in relationships, particularly about the first 10 years, the studies show there's a lot of power and control struggles that unconsciously play out in these kinds of things. So these and are power struggles. They are. Ah. are not named, but they're oftentimes these power struggles. And we're not talking about why they bother us. Oh, you left the toilet seat up again. Eh, what about that? Oh, well, right. underneath that, we have deeper yearnings. Yes, really, absolutely. To be, to be seen, to be understood, to be respected, to be cared about. And that toilet seat or doing the laundry or not doing the laundry or whatever it is feels as if we don't matter, that you're not cared about. That's why that becomes such a big deal. And why is it so wrong to respond with the silent treatment? Oh, my gosh. The silent treatment is this passive, aggressive, unopened kind of punishing. You have your seething and resentful. And that's not going to lead to any understanding. No. no, and in fact, you end up trying to communicate, well, I'll show him or I'll show right. her, but you're not saying what the real message is. What about what they did or didn't do bothers you? What do you want instead? So talking and arguing is always better than just zipping always. it up. Always, right. and getting your anger out mm -hmm. openly. That's good to know. <laughs> this is really good. You're making me feel a lot better, Judith. <laughs> I am half know. Cuban after all. We do this a lot. No. <laughs> what, what about the if you really loved me card. People oh, play that a lot. If really, you really love me, you'd know what to buy me for my birthday, or you would tell your mother off, or right. <laughs> you would do things the way I want. Part of the issue with that is we somehow equate love with like mind reading. Yes. If you really love me, you'd know exactly what it is I want, or you would have some obedience to my wishes without my saying that. If we Again, that 100% responsibility for our own satisfaction and happiness, it's ours to tell each other what do we really need, what do we want, how do we want the other to behave, what matters to us? What does it mean to us? Rather than have some silent gain that we're keeping some score, if you really right. love me. Absolutely. You know, and how did that become equated with love? You know, love is much, love is messy. It's it's being alive and engaged. And Judith Wright, truth. thank you so much for making us all feel better about our messy relationships. <laughs> and for the complete list, readers can go to your book to thank get you. more information and more great advice. Thank you so much for thank that. You.